Alan, while you've got the floor, I think lead us on this most difficult study, the FIRE 3 study. I knew the moment the press release occurred uh, at ASCO because you could feel the booths shake. Uh, 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 and um, it's right. a really controversial and study. Unfortunately, you didn't feel the booth shake when they took back what the, or when they felt re remorse about the press release. So FIRE 3 was a study done by the AIO, the German cooperative group, uh, fully sponsored by a, a company, Merck KGA. And this was a, a fundamental challenge was Fulfiri plus Bev versus Fulfiri plus Cetuximab in KRS wild type patients. This is the Bev versus Cetuximab, the VEGF versus EGFR comparison. Very important question and in fact I think uh, this could, uh, this stood out as a, uh, as a seminal paper at the meeting. Uh, the problem was that uh, when you di drilled down there were some concerns. The findings in fact the conclusion was that there was a benefit to the cetuximab versus bev bevacizumab in terms of overall survival. The primary endpoint, interestingly enough, was response rate, which um, most of us would say is not a valid uh, endpoint, and that was not, not different, nor was progression-free survival different. And the bizarre thing about this study, the, hard, the thing that's most difficult to explain, is that the survival curves split at about, 24, about 18 to 24 months. So in fact, you're, you're saying that a treatment in the first eight, nine months of, uh, of the course of the patient makes a difference a year later. And it's kind of hard to figure out biologically how that would work. Now, we, we've subsequently learned that there was a recommendation within the protocol for a second line therapy, which some people would argue might not have been equivalent and may have accounted for the difference. Although we, we see that uh, patients got exposed to the same, um, the same number of patients got exposed to the same number of drugs. We don't know the sequence of the drugs. I think there may be some interesting findings when we drill down on the RAS status, the further RAS status of these patients. Uh, the uh, investigators talk about uh, depth of response, which uh, is interesting but uh, is a bit of hand waving, I think. So, so this is hard to explain, although it's not the only study that's ever shown a splay this far out in the course of the patient's uh, biology, but hard to explain. Does this settle the issue? I don't believe it does, although it's sent some, uh, some shock waves through the industry, I think. I think both arms had very high response rates, too. Right, I mean, they both 70 and 60 percent, something like that, that very was, high. Actually, I thought the trial would have been positive. I mean, with a response rate endpoint, we all expected, you know, cetuximab being in combination with the and KRS wild type, and then it was not. I mean, so the primary endpoint's negative, an important secondary endpoint's negative, and then a kind of, you know, in the end, you can only say it's hypothesis generating, mm -hmm. you know, what happens here. And, you know, we need to dig deeper into the, the patients. Who are these patients who benefit long term? So how are we going to know the answer? Well, hopefully we'll know <laughs> the answer soon. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you're referring to CLGB SWOG 80405, which was a randomized study done here in the intergroup in the U.S., with full fox or full fury with Bev versus Cetuximab. Remind us of the percentages here right. versus so, Vox. So this will not really settle the FIRE 3. Only about 30% of patients got full fury in 80405. A and a fair number of those got full fury because they'd failed full fox adjuvant. And biologically, that's probably a different patient population. So I, I don't think we'll get the, the full fury plus Bev versus Cetuximab, but we should get a broad picture of, of the EGFR versus VEGF, and uh, uh, we're very hopeful that this, the science that comes along with it, the correlatives, will clarify some of these issues. If this splits again like this, we're going to have to pay attention, right? We're going to have to figure out what's going on uh, in the biology uh, of our patients. I, I, don't think we, I don't think we can dismiss this as a, as a finding. We just have, as Axel said, it, if it, it, we have to look at it and make sure we can understand why that would be if, in fact, it is the case.